Xavier at the beginning of this tournament said they wanted Ohio State. The Buckeyes say, you want us, you got us. And right now, between these two teams, nothing standing but space and opportunity. Got to be careful what you wish for, and Xavier starts in the man-to-man -man defense. The point guard matchup going to be very impressive today. Here's Connolly, the freshman, Ivan Harris, fired. Weak side rebound, and this goes to Burrell. So Xavier coming off a 79-77 win over BYU in the first round. Justin Goldman with 23-5 and five on 8 of 17, shooting in 33 minutes. He's got a Larry Bird-like release on his jump shot. Now Cole backing up on Oden, jump up. Oh and Gus, you notice one thing, Ohio State does not help out in the post. Greg Oden plays behind and relies on his shot blocking ability. That was a great move inside by Cole to float it up with the left hand. Buckeyes are the number one team in the nation. Number one seed in the South. Oden, power dribble, gets to the cup. Halfway down, pops up, snatched out of there by Cade. Xavier running now. Burrell scoreless against BYU the other day. Inside, Cole off the glass. Maybe a little too easy. He was against Harris that time. Oden calling for it again. Mike Conley. And this is the Iceman for them. Jamar Butler, such a strong, confident, quiet player. Lewis, Conley. And Ohio State can kill you with that. Both Butler and Lewis are guys who can hit big three-point shots. Ohio State much more than Mike Conley and Greg Oden. Now Ohio State getting back. They're playing a zone. Playing 2 three zone. Mostly a man-to-man -man team, but they do play some zone. That allows Oden to wander in the middle. He's not tied down to one guy. Dolman is the zone buster. He fires. And halfway down, pops out. But with Oden in the middle of the zone, we could see it from where we were sitting. Dolman had to put a little bit of extra arc on that shot. Now Dolman, outlet to Lavender. He's great in transition. Straight to the bucket. Rejected. Picked up by Lewis. He's got Connolly. Connolly beats Dolman. Mike Connolly Jr. One of the great young point guards in all of college basketball. His father, Mike Conley Sr., a great long jumper and triple jumper, gold medalist in Barcelona in 1992. Skip pass, Burrell. They need his offense today. Loose ball ripped out of there. Up strong and in. And that's Justin Cage. We talked before the game about the three seniors for Xavier, the guys who were on that run to the Elite Eight. Cole and Cage and Dolman, and both Cole and Cage have scored so far in this game. Xavier stays in the man to man. Cole trying to keep Oden as far from the basket as possible. And Lewis knocks one down off the dribble. Ron Lewis, a transfer from Bowling Green, gives Ohio State a 7 4 lead. You cannot afford to play off Lewis and Butler out on the perimeter. You have to make them drive the ball to the basket. Xavier, a team that really relies a lot on motion. Sometimes you play a zone to prevent that motion. Lewis with the rebound. So, so far, Xavier starting slowly, two of seven from the field. Here's Conley. Early shooting. Ohio State at 50%. Odin wants it. Has great position. Draws a double team and a foul. Greg Odin. Well, Ohio State it does such a nice job in transition. Here, Odin isn't even the play. That's Ivan Harris who blocks the shot, and that's just like a turnover because Ohio State takes it out, particularly with Conley, pushes it down the court, and Lewis, a deadly finisher at the end of the break. Goldman picks up the foul. Strategy is obviously thus far to attack Greg Odin when he has the ball, force him to make decisions. Josh Duncan in the game. Odin backs up on him. Can't take it in, loose ball, batted around. Odin picks it up, has it swiped out of his hands. And Xavier kicks it out of bounds. But they're running a lot of different guys from different angles at Odin already. 15-51 to go, Ohio State up 7-4. Welcome back, Thad Mata. What a great season he's had, 31-3 at Ohio State, number one team in the nation. For three years, he was the head coach at Xavier. Led the team.
to the Elite Eight in 2004, lost to Duke by three points in Atlanta. But there's a lot of bad blood between these two squads because Coach Mata said he was going to stay at Xavier one day. The next day, he signed with Ohio State, and the Xavier fans haven't forgotten what took place. <laughs> the Xavier fans, every time they see Thad Mata here in this building, they've booed him so far. On 26 games, for three straight years. Now Odin posting up. Xavier stays in the man-to-man. -man. Cross the lane. Can't get it to fall. Batted around. Picked up by Lavender. Here comes Lavender in transition. Down the lane. Lavender, the runner, rims off. If Xavier's going to have a chance to win this game, Gus, they have to make shots like that. They've missed a couple of those transition runners, and all that allows Ohio State to do is get the ball out and go the other way. Lewis to the basket. And he's off to a good start. Ron Lewis with seven points. You miss in transition on one end, you give Ohio State an opportunity in transition on the other. 9-4. Ohio State stays in the zone. I don't think that model likes the results of that first play where they threw it inside the pole and he scored easily against the man-to-man. -man. Xavier has won 10 of their last 11 games. They fell to Rhode Island in the Atlantic 10 semifinals. Shot clock down, Burrell deep in the corner, short. No rhythm so far for Xavier. In the front court, Butler will fire from there. Duncan with the rebound. Inside, nice play. And there's the transition. You get in transition, you beat Odin down the court. Justin Cage makes it a 9-6 game. He has four. Odin in the high post. Odin jump hook. Off the heel and the foul. So far, Odin having some problems getting it to stay down. He's 0 for 4. One of the things that helps. Here's Odin. Here's the ball coming down the court. You want to get the ball down the court before Odin gets there. Nice job in transition by Xavier. And they've struggled in the half court offense. Odin now going out. He struggled offensively early. Thad Mata really lobbying the referees hard. Thinks Odin is being fouled on the inside. The officiating has been terrific in this tournament and all season in college basketball because they are allowing these players, especially the big guys, to play and be physical with each other. Back door. Bam. Derek Rowe. One of the most explosive young players in all of college basketball. And Ohio State lead, its lead has been cut to one. Connolly the teardrop, no. Duncan going in, and there's a foul. You talked about Derrick Brown. This kid is a fabulous leaper, and if you can't go through the zone, we'll go over it. Odin goes out of the game, so he's not a factor, so you feel comfortable throwing the ball up to a great leaper. And Derrick Brown from Dayton, Ohio, Chaminade Juliet High School had eight points and 16 rebounds in 16 minutes versus BYU. Six of those rebounds, offensive rebounds. So he will attack the glass. Right at the moment, his offensive move consists of a dunk, but when you jump <laughs> like he can and get great position, that's enough. Raymond to Burrell, 10 to shoot. Duncan inside. Brown kicks it out. Duncan, he can shoot it. Way down, it comes out off the glass. Ohio State the other way. Xavier's done a really nice job on their defensive board so far. Stand the man to man to Williger in the game on the baseline. Short, tipped up, Hunter can't get it. Track down Burrell. Burrell averages 13 a game. Duncan this time he sets his feet. Both teams shooting poorly to start. Xavier 4 of 13, Ohio State 4 of 14. So much emotion in a game like this, though, Gus. It takes teams a while to get, get, the, get sort of calmed down and just start playing basketball. The jitters. Daquan Cook, great offensive player. Can't make it down, snatched out of there by Duncan. Here's Lavin. He's from Columbus, rising fire. Connolly the other way. Oh, 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 oh. 
And we'll stay right here. Tight game so far. Both teams nervous. 11.46 to play in the first half. Ohio State up by a penny. You talk about some excitement, Gus. Conley in transition is about as much fun as you can possibly have watching a basketball game. All right, let's take a look at the tournament summary. And it's a tournament that has been very interesting for the lack of upsets. And, that, you know, the higher seeds, uh, it's been the number nine seed beating the number eight seed is the most common upset, and you really can't consider that to be much of an upset. Here's Oden on the baseline. Now Butler stops. Xavier has been in the man-to-man -man throughout. Cook. Neither team able to buy a basket. Ohio State 417. Xavier 414. Now Wolf comes in to run the point for the Musketeers. And now Ohio State back to the man-to-man -man coming out of the timeout. And a whistle. Foul coming up on Lighty. That's his first. The Ohio State foul is on number 23. Dolman checks in, and he replaces Derek Brown. Just keep an eye on the fouls because Xavier does a great job getting to the free throw line and converting at the free throw line. Xavier, a 74% free throw shooting team on the season, Dan. They were 23 of 29 against BYU in the first round here on Thursday. So you're absolutely right. Raymond. Bowman backs it up, 17 to shoot. Looking inside, lets it fly. Raymond got a hand on it, but can't track it down. Cook is there, but he steps on the sideline, out of bounds. Dolman is an excellent three-point shooter, Gus. That shot might have been one step out of his range, and he was shooting it over the outstretched hand of Greg Oden. And as we talked about Oden before, he makes a difference, even if he doesn't get his hand on the ball. Both these teams tight to start this game. They haven't met since 1984 in the NIT. Xavier winning that game, so it's been 23 years. They've met three times since 1933. Inside, nice catch, Cage. 12 to shoot, backs it up. Now Wolf with the step on the baseline. Short, oh, yeah. gets the bounce. First of all, the rims here are great. <laughs> well, if you're a shooter, I think if you're a defensive guy, you don't think that's so good, but absolutely, Gus, for fans watching the game, you like to see those rims that allow the bounce. Six unanswered points for Xavier. 10-9. And a whistle and a foul. Tomorrow on CBS, a detective discovers his wife's killer on a new episode of Cold Case starring Katherine Morris. Tomorrow at 9, 8 central on CBS. That's what we have going on here, Gus, a cold case. <laughs> that's right. Ohio State over their last eight from the field. Ron Lewis checks back in. Oden, that's an offensive foul. So Greg Oden getting a little frustrated. He's only a freshman. And the interesting thing about Greg Oden is he very rarely does this. He's very patient when he gets the ball inside, but very clearly lowers his shoulder. Picked up his first foul. Now Dolman. Raymond, he can hit it. Except zone again. It looks like Ohio State's in the zone when Lavender's in the game. Xavier getting good looks at the basket. They just can't convert. Jump hook over and rattles home. And that's one reason why Ohio State won't stay cold. They have the option. They can go in the inside and get some points. Greg Oden leads the Buckeyes in scoring, rebounding, and block shots. Dolman can't track the ball down. Odin does a great job getting position inside, and then you can't double team if he's going to shoot that jump hook so quickly. Nice recovery by Odin. He has a very good demeanor out on the court. That foul call, he doesn't lose his head. He's, he has a very, very good approach to the game. Now Conley, stripped by Lavender. Lavender. Cross down traffic to the bucket, leaves it. How about that? Cage. I thought he took it too far, Gus. I thought he was going to try to shoot it, and Odin was right there, but he knew better than I. He went and saw it when Odin got to him and then passed it behind. Cage with six. 
Lavender's the key to this team. Conley blocked by Dolman. Picked up. Hunter dumps it down, and Conley makes it home. Ohio State back up. Bounce pass, Cage, and he's fouled from behind. Great ball movement by the Musketeers. And they're doing a much better job against the zone. And Drew Lavender thus far in this game, his quickness has sort of neutralized the quickness of Mike Conlon. Here he waits till Odin comes, gets Odin off his feet, and then makes the pass. Even Odin isn't quick enough to recover from that. So Cage at the line. He's a senior from Indianapolis. This is the first. As you take a look at the free throw shooting this season. Look at how many times Xavier gets to the line as opposed to their opponents, and then they make 74%. Cage a 75% free throw shooter. Getting to the line and converting is a big part of the Xavier game. Lewis picked up the foul, his first. Game tied at 13. First half. Ohio State, Xavier playing for a trip to the Sweet 16. It's the Big Ten versus the Atlantic Ten. In the pivot. Cage doing a nice job closing on the shooter. Cage has a couple inches on Lewis. Odin. Oh. And a foul on the floor. Now Odin using his quickness. That's a good point, Gus. You play Odin, you try to be physical with him, you try to put your body up against him, but he's a smart enough player that he can go right around, and that's what he did. He felt that they were pushing him, and he just used that quickness for the spin move. First foul on Duncan. Odin again. Butler from deep. And hits. The Iceman. That's great spacing out there by Ohio State. Butler threw the ball inside and then found a good shooting position, one where it'd be hard to recover, and got a wide open shot on the pass from Odin. Butler against Central Connecticut State, 17 points. He was 5 of 6 from the three-point line. Lavender. Whistle and foul. This will go against Lewis, and it's his second. 7.29 to play first half. Ohio State on top of Xavier. 16-13 here in Lexington. Welcome back as we take a look at the game summary. Both of these teams are a little nervous as this one gets ready to start. Gus Johnson along with Dan Bonner and Xavier still in this game, Danny. You talked about it. They had to hit threes, but they're still in even though they haven't done a good job. You're correct, but I think if they're going to actually come around and win the game, they're going to have to start making threes. They've done a great job on the backboard so far. Very few second chance opportunities for Ohio State. And the Buckeyes get back into that zone. Lavender, Burrell, Dolman. Along with Duncan and Cage, here's Burrell, long jump shot off the mark. Xavier 0 for 7 from the three-point line, 6 of 20 overall, 30%. Now Cook posted. Tough shot. Odin with the offensive rebound. Strong oh. his hands by Lavender. Lavender with numbers. Blocked by Connolly. Great play. Connolly, the outlet pass. Butler lets it go and hits. That is twice now in this game we've seen Xavier have a shot blocked in transition, and Ohio State answers. You'd better find Butler beyond that three-point line. Jamar Butler, so cold with his game. As you take a look at the bracket, the winner takes on the winner of Virginia, Tennessee. 1913 Buckeyes. Dolman kicks it out, reversal, Burrell, 11 to shoot, and he throws it away, Duncan. Odin in the middle of that zone means you just can't throw it in there and get an easy jump shot. Connolly in and out. Odin tired down. He's having a hard time getting up and down. Burrell to the basket and an offensive foul. Just a little earlier, we talked about Ohio State and the amount of space. Watch over here on this side of the court. Just two players 
Butler throws the ball inside to Odin, and watch how he moves. He moves away from the play so he can get the pass back, and the man can't recover quickly, and he gets a wide open three. So Greg Odin will take a blow. Terwilliger replaces him. Odin leaves. He's one of five from the field. Two points, two rebounds. And a whistle away from the ball. And they will go against Brown. Yes. Derek Brown. And Derek Brown is on the floor. Good things happen. I well, sure do. This young man, the folks at Xavier think he may be the next big star at Xavier. And they've had some big ones in the past. David West, Jermaine Sato, Lionel Chalmers, James Posey. James Posey, exactly. Ivan Harris can really shoot the basketball when he's in rhythm. To Williger, good passer. Butler kicks it out. Cook. Daquan Cook has really struggled with his shot lead. Yeah, over the last seven or eight games, his number's not very good. Only averaging about five points. He's out of Dayton Dunbar High School. Now Odin out of the game, so they switch back to the man-to-man. -man. Should be some penetration opportunities now for Lavender. Runs a pick and roll. Goldman, he's been very quiet. Off the dribble now. Strong to the box. On that elite, basket for Dolman. On that Elite Eight team that we talked about, Dolman was a freshman and he was sort of a designated three-point shooter, but as his career has gone on, he's developed a complete game. Can't make that driving move, though, with Odin in the game. The season high 29 against Rhode Island. Now Conley really working that in-and-out dribble. Really worked that screen effectively. Lavender tried, but he just wasn't able to get around. Dolman dumps it down. Brown. And a whistle and foul on the baseline. Aerial coverage of today's game is brought to you by Goodyear. Talk about Mike Conley and his ability with the basketball. He's so quick, he, he appeared to be going the one way, and Lavender went that way, and the guy actually got caught up with his own man, and Conley came back the other way. Second foul called on. Ohio State's Terwilliger as Brown goes to the line. Derek Brown, a freshman from Dayton, shoots 70% from the field. He came into this tournament 73 of 104. Greg Oden returns. He's explosive. And he brings a lot of energy off the bench. Second one goes down. And a timeout on the floor. 4.31 to play in the first half. 21-17. Ohio State on top of Xavier. Buckeyes with the 21-17 lead over Xavier here in the first half. Sean Miller, Thad Mata, they're not just friends, they're best friends. Thad Mata saying that Sean is my best friend in life. They coached together at Miami of Ohio, rather, as assistants under Herb Syndic in 1995, sharing an office. And when Sean came to Xavier, he didn't have a place to live for a month, so he, his wife Amy, his two kids, and his child on the way all stayed at Coach Mata's house for that month. So very difficult for both these young coaches to face each other this afternoon. And one of the difficulties with their players facing off, Gus, is each guy knows the other one's philosophy and way of thinking intimately. Makes it hard to pull any surprises. Now Odin inside. Turn around. Jump shot. No good. But he's fouled on the play. If you're going to double team Odin or any other big guy, Gus, you got to get there before he dribbles the ball. You can't be slapping at it once the ball's in his hands after the dribble. For Greg Odin, he can use his right hand or he can use his left hand. Pretty efficient with both as he hits the first free throw. The amazing thing about that, Gus, and this story has been told before, but I, it's so impressive, I'll tell it again. He never in his life even practiced a left-handed free throw before August of this year. And yet he was able to do it well enough that he ground shoot 62% with his off. Great rotation on his release. Dolman picked up his second foul as Odin hits the free throws and heads to the bench. 
Terwilliger is back in. 23-17. Xavier trying to get some balls to stay down for him. 7 of 22 from the field. 0 for 7 from the three-point line. Wolf. For the most part, their inside opportunities have been lobs over the zone when Odin's not in the game for transition baskets. Inside, Cole creates space and the foul. That is precisely the kind of play that has not been available when Odin is in the game. 23-19 now. Cole will go to the line. Working hard against the zone. Rupp Arena. Lexington, Kentucky. 347 to play in the first half. Ohio State with the 23-19 lead. Greg Odin. So far on the afternoon, four points, three rebounds as Cole misses the free throw. Been a herky-jerky first half. Really has been. Nobody able to get any offensive rhythm. Well, it's a good battle inside between Cole and Odin. Cook, nice look. Hunter gets the roll. Wait a minute, basket interference is the call. Looks like Odin may have interfered with the ball as it hung on the rim. And Thad Mata can't believe it. That's one of the best facial expressions of the tournament. <laughs> <laughs> and the Musketeers turn it over. Conley. Four turnovers for Xavier, five for Ohio State. Now Odin posting Duncan. Butler, quick release. See if Xavier can get a good shot here. This zone has been a problem. Now they go into the man to man. With Odin in the game, though, Xavier just hasn't been able to get anything close to the basket. Duncan steps back and hits. And that is critical. Duncan is a guy who can be a very, very effective outside shooter. If he makes that basket consistently, that pulls Odin away, and that really helps the Musketeers. He came into this tournament shooting 38% from the three-point line, 37 of 97, and traveling violation against Cook. But let's go back to the basket interference a couple of plays ago. Well, this is a tough, tough thing where the guy guarding Odin has to come and help, and he looked like he really did get his fingertips on it while it was on the rim. He also appeared to know it and try to pull away at the last second without much success. 23-22. Back to the zone. If you're Xavier, this is where you want to be. Absolutely. And you haven't shot the ball well, and amazingly enough, you're only down one point with two minutes to go. The chance to take the lead here. Burrell on the baseline, and he's pushed. Hunter pushes it. And don't forget, coming up at halftime, our crew in New York will break it down for you. Greg Gumbel, Clark Kellogg, and Seth Davis, Tournament News, DJ and Darrell, and also a Naismith watch update. Burrell at the line. Stanley Burrell, a junior from Indianapolis. He was 0 for 4 against BYU. Misses the free throw. Well, uncharacteristically, Xavier struggling from the free throw line today. They're only six. Yeah. Conley and a foul. And Mike Conley, really the catalyst that gets this Ohio State offense going. He's a point guard. He gets the ball where it's supposed to go. He can steal it, and he's great at penetrating to the basket. Mike Conley Jr. led the Big Ten in assists, steals, and an assist to turnover ratio. As he hits the first, he's a 65% free throw shooter. There's his dad, Mike Conley Sr., the Olympian gold medalist. Conley Jr., the first Ohio State player ever with 200 assists in a season. That is unbelievable. 
Only a freshman. Duncan picked up his second foul. 25-22. Buckeyes get back into the zone. And the zone, again, allows Odin to stay close to the basket. He doesn't have to go outside to guard guys like Duncan. Nice look, Duncan, and he missed the layup. That's the presence of Greg Odin right there. He caught the ball, and he was thinking, where is it? Butler from deep. Kept alive by Hunter, and tapped up and in by Odin. That has to be a huge concern for Xavier. They have not given up very many offensive rebounds, but with Hunter and Odin both in the game at the same time, it's hard to keep the Buckeyes off the board. Under a minute to go. Duncan lets it fly. That's a problem. He was too close to the basket. <laughs> Move him out a little bit. And he knew Odin was under the basket, so he didn't have to deal with that. That is a huge basket by Duncan. Ohio State appeared to be on one of their patented runs, and that's how you stop a run. You put the ball in the goal. Duncan had the big layup against BYU to give the Musketeers a 77-75 lead. Xavier now in a 1-3-1 trap here. Shot clock, game clock about the same. Butler. You don't want him just to hold the ball for the last shot. Seven to shoot. Conley. Down the lane, the runner. No! And it goes up and in. Looks like it may have been basket interference. Not this time. The call's always even out in the end. And that's the end of the first half. Ohio State with a 29-25 lead. Let's take another look at that last basket. Very difficult to use something like a 1-3-1 trap against Mike Conley. Just takes the ball hard to the basket. And there's that offensive rebounding again. That is a tough, tough call. I'm glad I'm not the one who has to make it. Looks like he did touch it. 29-25. We'll send you to Greg Gumbel with AT&T at the half after this message and a word from your local station. You're watching CBS Sports, home of the men's NCAA Basketball Championship. Welcome back to Rupp Arena. Tight game here, 29-25, Ohio State with the lead. Gus Johnson along with Dan Bonner, and welcome back to Rupp. And Danny, Xavier is still in this basketball game, and they haven't hit any shots. They really haven't, but what they have been able to do is they've held Ohio State to only 35% shooting. But right at the moment, Gus, they're like the little Dutch boy. They got their finger in the <laughs> hole in the dike, but there's other holes starting to sprout out. They've got to start making some baskets. All right, Greg Oden in the first half, six points, five rebounds. One foul. And those, uh, those other holes in the dike, Gus, are the offensive rebounding. Ohio State really picked it up in the last couple of minutes of the half using their inside power. The only way Xavier can counter that is to make shots. Dolman inside. Turn around, fade away. Got it. He's the key for Xavier. Justin Dolman, their leading scorer, averages 13 a game. He has four now. Also, Stanley Burrell was scoreless against BYU. He continues to struggle. Burrell scoreless in this game. You have to figure that eventually he'll get a couple to go. Well, certainly Sean Miller hopes so because he told me yesterday they could not win if Burrell did not score. Now Burrell on the wing, guarded by Butler. Pick and roll, heads down the lane, throws it away. I think in that situation, guys, you have to attack Odin. Five turnovers for Xavier. Harris a three. Off the mark. Odin with the offensive rebound. Leans in, can't get it to fall. No fall. Lavender pushing it. The kick. Dolman straight away. Pure. These are the Musketeers that we saw on Thursday. Dolman now with seven. Xavier up by a penny. Connolly poked out of his hands from behind. And it's last touch by Xavier. Odin does a great job getting position inside, and nobody drops their arms, Gus. Everybody keeps their arms up in the air so they don't swat at the ball. And as a result, Odin misses the shot, and there's no foul. Now that's a foul. A holding foul called 
Cole grabbing the back of Odin's jersey. And he picks up his first. First foul against Xavier in the second half. Sometimes if you're a big guy inside, you can get away with using your body. As long as you don't put that knee out there, but you're never going to get away with hacking down with your arms, and that's what Cole did that time. Lewis, Butler, Odin, Harris, Connolly for the Buckeyes. Lewis. Connolly backs it up. Drives. Taken away by Lavender, but he steps on the baseline out of bounds. Mike Conley Jr. has had all kinds of problems with Lavender. Lavender's defensive quickness has been remarkable tonight. Lavender does a great job watching when Conley exposes the basketball and knocking it away. But you know what? Conley doesn't mind. He keeps going after him. He's not worried by one bad play. He goes and gets the next play. Great defense by Burrell as Butler turns it over. Seven turnovers for Ohio State. Now Lavender, Goldman, Burrell. Cole, Cage, Cole inside, blocked from behind. And they will tie it up. Possession arrow favoring the Buckeyes. Okay, maybe it's not a good idea to attack Odin inside. Here they try to do that. Pass inside and a very quick move by Cole. I'm sure he thought he had room, but that's why old Odin is back there in the center of that zone. Lewis pops out. Short and out of bounds. Near the end of today's game, we'll select the Chevrolet player of the game from each team to honor their determination and outstanding play. Chevrolet will make a $1,000 contribution to each university's general scholarship fund. America's brand supports America's best. Chevy and American Revolution. 30-29 Xavier. The winner of this game advances to the Sweet 16. Bowman fires and hits again. In the second half, Gus, he has caught the ball in the middle of that zone a couple of times now and turned and shot the ball. Not worried at all about Odin. Much different than he played in the first half. Bowman has a very nice mid-range jump shot. Odin, great catch, and one. And now Odin directing traffic with one of his teammates. We talked about Dolman. He was on that, a starter on that Elite Eight team when he was a freshman. Catches the ball inside, goes right over Odin. You cannot play in front of Odin. That's an excellent pass inside. And he's telling his teammates, hey guys, let's get going. Dolman called for the foul, his third, as Cole has a conversation with Coach Miller. Greg Odin at the line. Free throw short. 32-31 in the front court. Cage driving and a whistle. That'll go on Odin his second. Playing defense with his arms as opposed to sliding with his feet. And Greg Odin picks up his second foul. He's much less intimidating out on the perimeter though, Gus, when you have a chance to go around him. Now Burrell kicks it out. Dolman stripped and fouled. That's Conley Jr. Picks up his first. The Ohio State bat is on number one, Mike Conley. And this is first and the team's second. Duncan in the game now for Xavier. Goldman the inbounder. And he finds Lavender. Goldman's got to be careful with those three fouls. Lots of times you can be cautious on defense, but he puts his head down and tries to drive to the basket. He might pick up a charge. And usually when Xavier starts getting going, it's Lavender that leads him on the baseline. Out of bounds. Cage. As Miller looks, six turnovers for Xavier. Ohio State was back in the man-to-man -man that time, and Lavender was trying to get the ball to Cage to beat Odin. The winner of this game takes on the winner of Virginia, Tennessee. Now Butler. Stop and start. And banks it in. Nice. He has eight. In the corner. Cage from deep. Count. 
Justin Gage. And he gives Xavier a 35-33 lead. Finally pulls up. Right hand jump hook no. Loose. Knocked out of bounds. That will stay right here. Everybody talks about Butler's ability to shoot the three, but he can drive to the basket. Ten guys from Xavier have made threes this year. Cage today. 15-59 to play in the second half. Xavier on top of Ohio State right now. And this is a special meeting for Drew Lavender and Ron Lewis. They're both from Columbus. They both played at Brookhaven High School in Columbus for Coach Bruce Howard. Won the state title in 2002. They go off into the world. Lavender goes to Oklahoma. Lewis goes to Bowling Green. Lavender transfers to Xavier. Lewis transfers to Ohio State. Now the former teammates are meeting each other here with a chance to go to the Sweet 16. Lewis is shot blocked. Burrell with a chance to get an easy one. Comes up short. Now 0 for 8 in the NCAA tournament. Lewis, and he's fouled. So Ron Lewis will go to the line. Gus, want to take a second here to wish our very best to Dave Gavitt, former Providence coach and Big East commissioner. He was here at this site working for NCA radio and got sick, an upper respiratory infection. They took him to the hospital. We understand he's doing fine. He's probably watching the game. We just want to pass along our best wishes. Lewis at the line makes the first. Foul was called on Duncan, his third. Here come the subs. And I talked to Lewis before the game. He said that he and Lavender had a chance to talk before the game, at, actually last night, and that they were looking forward to playing against each other. But you have to think that Coach Bruce Howard, who passed away two years after that team won the state championship at Brookhaven in 2002, Coach Howard must be hovering around somewhere <laughs> really happy about what he's seeing, his guys playing the two great schools in this big game. And Ohio State goes back to the man-to-man. -to -man. Game tied at 35. Foul problem is really an issue now for Xavier with both Duncan and Goldman on the bench. From outside scoring power gone. Lavender leaves it inside. Rejected by Oden. And Oden comes up with the rebound. Here come the Bucks. Butler, short, batted around. Who wants it? And a foul on the floor. Going against Brown. The mighty Oden. Taking over. He is such a force on the inside. Now that time Lavender thought he had Oden. Oden came to him, but did you see how quickly Oden came down? Turned around, blocked the shot. Then he got the rebound. Inside Oden. Nice catch. Missed the layup. Gets it back. And now a whistle. Let's see. And this will go against Xavier. And Shaw Miller can't believe it. He wanted an over-the-back foul on Odin, which would have been his third. Odin starting to get real aggressive now. Weak side. Duck down. Conley. They throw it inside and <laughs> he almost, almost went in the basket. Almost threw that in the basket. Lavender. Even Odin's not that big. Stop and start. Lavender. And a timeout call by Sean Miller. Dolman getting ready to check back into the game. Ohio State Xavier tied up at 35. Welcome back as we take a look at the game summary. Both teams shooting poorly. But we have a close basketball game. Gus Johnson along with Dan Bonner. And these two teams have waited 23 years to play each other. Where they sure have. And I think the wait is more on Xavier's part than Ohio State. The small private school against the big state institution. Ohio State stays in the man-to-man. -man. They've been in man-to-man -man and zone. Switching it up. Dolman inside. Can't get the bounce. Odin with the tough rebound. His 10th. Now Conley. 
to the bucket. Double clutch. No. Batted around. Dolman kicks it out. Lavender. He's got Raymond with him. Raymond. Beautiful body control. As Lavender puts that one on a dime. Xavier goes up by a deuce. Lewis thinking about it. And hits. Ron Lewis is a ball player. 38-37. He has 12. Gus, you said it correctly. You could see clearly he was thinking about it. The defense has to get out there and make him drive. He can do that pretty well. But you don't want to give him that wide open three. Dolman looking for it in the corner. Has it. Nice look, Cole. Block from behind. Who's that? And the foul is going to go on Hunter, his second. Odin has two. Hunter now with two. As Brandon Cole goes to the line, he's a 69% free throw shooter. He entered the starting lineup for the final 12 games after Josh Duncan injured his ankle. And this team became a different team when he became a starter. What happened was when Cole's in the game, he's basically down on the inside. Duncan is a guy who likes to come out to the perimeter, so with Cole in the game, Xavier has more space out on the perimeter, allowed the other guys to get in spots to shoot, drive it to the basket. They just play a little bit better as a team when he's in the game. Duncan's a shooter. Cole, a totally different player. He rebounds, defends, and bangs you in there. Ten lead changes, three ties in this one. 39-38, Xavier. Keep in mind that Dolman has three fouls and Xavier can't afford to have him get four. Traveling violation on Odin. Gusson, as we watch the Ohio State bench, they hold up signs to call the plays. But interestingly enough, they angle them away from the Xavier bench because these coaches know one another very well. They don't want the Xavier guys to see the terminology that they're using. The game within the game. Sean Miller said it best, we're like mirrors of each, of each other. Except for one thing, <laughs> big guy in the middle. I think Xavier's gonna need to get some offense from Burrell. Here's Lavender, penetrating. Fires. Knocked out of bounds and head the other way. John Cal, Les Jones, Mike Wood. The three officials. Pick and roll Lewis with Odin. Lewis crosses over and a foul. Reach in coming up. Had he not reached in his hand, he was going to get a charge. Cage called for the foul. And don't forget, coming up next, Butler, Maryland. That's a good one, a 4-5. And then Rick Pitino and the Cardinals against Billy Gillespie's Aggies from Texas A&M. That one could be brutal. Pitino's team doing such a nice job in the first round against Stanford pressing. Lewis, the scoop, Dolman clears it. That's a good one-on-one -on -one matchup for Ohio State out on the perimeter. Lewis can take Cage. He just didn't finish. Now Lavender guarded by Conley. Still no points from the starting Xavier backcourt. Duncan wide open. Short. Butler. Odin. And one. Eleven fifty to play in the second half. Ohio State takes a 40-39 lead. Greg Oden going to the free throw line right after this. Forty thirty-nine. Ohio State with the lead over Xavier. 11:50 to play in the second half. Drew Lavender had 17 points, five assists, four rebounds, and three turnovers against BYU on Thursday. He had two points at halftime, Dan. 
He came out in the second half and really got his game going. Right now, he's scoreless. Dustin, I thought that was a key factor in the game. That he, but what he was able to do in that second half the other night against BYU is take the ball down into the lane and score on those little runners, and he hasn't even attempted that with Odin standing there in the middle. Page. What a great job by Connor to come over and help. Dolman kicks it down. Duncan's got to hit some. And does. Duncan's going to be wide open for that. On dribble penetration, he has nine, three threes. And Xavier reclaims the lead, 42-41. He's the kid that hit the big shot against BYU to give Xavier the lead late in the game. Xavier stays in the man-to-man. -man. Here's that matchup we talked about, Lewis against Kane. Dolman tracks it down on the Lewis miss. Here comes Lavender. Leaves it, Dolman lets it go. Duncan with the rebound. And he's fired. You can still have dribble penetration and draw the defense even without shooting the ball against Duncan, and that's exactly what happened there. Dolman takes it in, the defense comes to him, and he passes it out to Duncan. You know, with Odin in the middle, I don't know why the defense would collapse that much. That's a good point. Third foul on Hunter. In the backcourt is Lavender. Lavender, Duncan, Cage, Dolman, Burrell. Xavier still not getting anything from Burrell. But you get the feeling that before this game is over, he's going to hit a big shot or two. Now Ohio State goes small. Cage exploding on the baseline and goes right through Odin. That's a nice move by Cage. Takes him outside and drives to the baseline. Lighty has come in the game, and Hunter has gone out because Dad Mahler trying to find a way to guard both Dolman and Duncan. Then want those three-point shots. Xavier said they wanted Ohio State. And a foul! Offensive foul against Odin. His third. Do you leave him in? You, I, well, I think at this point in the game, he can come out for a couple seconds. But you talk about sticking your nose in there. Duncan sticks his nose right into Odin's elbow and picks up the foul call. Now let's see if Xavier attacks Odin now that he has three fouls. Lavender, Cage, takes a jump shot. And hits! Xavier said they wanted Ohio State. They've waited 23 years. Space and opportunity is here right now. Largest lead of the game. 47-41 at Rupp. 9.53 to play. Forty-seven, forty-one. Xavier a nine against Ohio State. The top seed in the South, Sean Miller. And Thad Mata are best friends. Miller replaced Mata when he left Xavier to take the Ohio State job. The Xavier fans don't like Mata anymore because he said he was staying on one night and the next night he took the job at Ohio State. They want revenge. And right now, with 9.53 to play in the second half, Xavier leads it 47 to 41. And Thad Mata showing a lot of confidence in his young big man as he Loden went back out on the court. Thad Mata showed, told him, you have three fouls. Now Conley spins, lost it. Buckeyes getting tight. 11 turnovers. Pick and roll, Lavender. Cage has been terrific. Trying to isolate him on the, on the side against Odin. Cage pops out. Odin has three fouls. Coleman goes up high, and Lewis ties him up. The possession arrow favors Xavier. Boy, Thad Martis. Head, or his, uh, his heart had to be right up in his mouth there. As we take a look at the series history, this is the fourth meeting. First meeting in 1933, last meeting in 1984. 9.08 to play, second half. Xavier with the 47-41 lead. And I think Cage has done a great job of taking Odin out to the perimeter and making him use his feet to play defense. I think if he'd have pushed through, he might have gotten a foul on Odin there. In the corner, Duncan! 
Josh Duncan. A two-point field goal. 49-41 Xavier. They only had five seconds left on the shot clock. They had to get something quickly, and they did. Lewis pulls up for three. And answers. Cold-blooded ball player. Veteran ball player, Ohio State. A lot of young guys out there, but Butler and Lewis are the two veterans. Lewis with 15. Lavender. Guarded by Lighty now. Well, Duncan's mismatched against Conley inside. Cage taking Odin off the dribble. Step back. Jump shot. Yeah, my goodness. 8-14 to play second half. And suddenly, Gus, it's raining three-point baskets for Xavier. You knew they eventually would start hitting shots. Ohio State has to respond, though. And the man to do it usually is Butler. And he travels. 7.54 to play. Xavier asked for it. They wanted it. They're getting it. We talked about the X Factor being three veterans and three point shots. Well, one of those veterans is Justin Cage, and he has hit three three-point baskets in the second half to lead Xavier to this eight-point lead. Seven of seven overall, three of three from beyond the arc. In the second half, Xavier is 10 of 18 from the field. Ohio State, five of 16. Al Goldman, along with Lavender. Cage, Cole, and Burrell. Ohio State stays with the small lineup, and they need to use the small lineup to put more pressure on the basket. Though. Eight to shoot. Lavender has to hurry now. Four to shoot. Lavender, fall away. Got it! Woo! Fifty-five, forty-four. Xavier. Largest lead of the game. So the number one team in the country, the number one team in the South is on the ropes. We'll see what they're made of right now. Lewis, short, oh, with the rebound, and he sticks it in. There's plenty of time left. Ohio State does not need to force shots like that one. The big guy inside, throw him the ball. They didn't throw it to him. He went to get it himself and score. Here comes little Drew Lavender from Columbus, Ohio. Goldman, senior. Now you don't want to lose your aggressiveness here if you're Xavier. You want to keep attacking, take good shots. They work the shot clock down. Pick and roll. Lavender, stop and start. Inside, Cole, lost it, picked up. Conley leaves it for Butler. 55-48. John Miller tells his guys just to calm down. They want to run their offense. It's too early to start running time off the clock. Inside, nice catch. And a whistle and foul on the floor. Lighty, foul. Drew Lavender, this is with uh, no time left on the shot clock, and he just drills it from three. His first basket of the game, and Greg Oden can't get the ball in the set offense, so he just uh, three guys around his feet. What a play that is. Grabs the rebound, puts it in. Unbelievable balance to gather himself off the jump shot, off the dribble, rather, and knock down that jump shot. Morell fires a three. And Lewis with the rebound. Here comes Lewis. He's been their offensive leader this afternoon. Connolly, Butler, Cook, deep in the corner. Plus, I really think in this situation, Odin needs to touch it every time down. He doesn't need to shoot every time down, but he draws such attention inside. You have to throw him the ball. That'll give you more, opening shot, more openings for shots. Buckeyes guys have lost three games this season. North Carolina without Odin, Florida, and Wisconsin all on the road. Morrell. Cage 
steps back. Now gets to the bucket and a foul. He's been doing it all afternoon, and that's the fourth foul on Odin with five minutes to go. And now he has to sit. Xavier is doing a great job spreading the court out, getting Odin in isolation situations against Cage. That time, Cage did follow through. He didn't stop, and as a result, he draws the fourth foul. They finally get the ball in Cage's hands, and he just keeps going. He feels that contact. That was a great job to follow through. Even though he had that shot, had no chance of going in. You've got to force the referee to blow the whistle in that situation. So Thad Mata not substituting, and he's going to leave Greg Oden in the game. 20 points for Cage. Gutsy call for Mata. 57-48. Connolly. They're looking inside. For Oden, he has it. Drop step, and he's fine. And that is why Thad Mata left him in the game. He's confident that his big man can be careful on the defensive end, but on the offensive end, he needs him inside so they can throw him the ball. He can't guard Cage anymore, though. Because Cage knows how to play him. Oden at the line. Misses the front end. And Brown breaks it. Lavender. Odin is now matched up against Derek Brown. And Sean Miller calls a timeout. 431 to play second half. Xavier with a 57-48 lead. Welcome back. Don't forget, coming up, another great matchup. Four versus a five. Maryland Butler then later on here. Louisville and Texas A&M a three versus a six. Greg Oden comes back onto the floor. He has four fouls. Xavier with the 57-48 lead. And Coach Shaw Miller has got great performances from some unsung guys. Cage only averages 10 points. He has 18. Duncan has hit three threes. Make that 20 points, rather, for Cage. And during that timeout, Brown went out, Duncan came in, so now Odin has to guard an offensive threat on the perimeter. Lavender, top of the key, rebounded by Lewis. No need for Ohio State to panic. They've got plenty of time, but they have to start getting good shots on offense. Lewis takes one in high. He has been awesome, 17 points, and a timeout called by the Buckeyes. 57-50. Ron Lewis driving. 57-50, Xavier with the lead. And it's an Ohio State team as you get a look at Sean Miller's bride sitting there in the stands. Look of concern on her face. And then to Thad Mata. Xavier needs to run its offense. There's still too much time left in the game to be worried about running time off the shot clock. You don't take bad shots, but you take the good shots that are available. Now, a very small lineup in the game for Ohio State. Morrell driving inside. Got it up and in. And that is the first basket of the NCAA tournament for Burrell. And what a smart play by Burrell. Not only is Odin not in the game, there are no big guys in the game. And so he hasn't shot it well from outside, so he just takes it all the way to the goal. Connolly in the corner, Cook gets to the bucket, left-hand scoop, no. And Lavender gets the rebound. Lavender so cool. Oh, slick with the basketball. Got to force the tempo on defense if you're Ohio State now. You've got that. You've got five small guys in the game, so you've got to exert pressure on the basketball. Lavender pulls it back. Ten to shoot. Go inside against this lineup. Five to shoot. Three to shoot. Lavender double clutch. Lewis with the rebound, and he's fouled, bringing it up the floor. And Burrell has not scored a basket in this tournament, and it's an awfully big one for number one. 
Xavier with a 59-50 lead and a win today over Ohio State would be a big, big, big one. Obviously, there's a lot of bad blood, not between the players and him, but between the fans and, you know, Thad Mott and how he left and whatnot. So <laughs> I know for a fact it'll mean the world to them if we can go out there and, and, and knock off Ohio State. Right now they're doing it. Two minutes and 54 seconds away, Thad Mata left Xavier. The reason that the bad blood is there, because one night he said he was staying. The next night he was the head coach of the Buckeyes of Ohio State. After leading the team to the Elite Eight, Lewis at the line. Sean Miller is his best friend. In the press conference yesterday, he said, Sean Miller, great coaches leave this program, and we've had some great coaches here. Yes, and I think that's the important point about Thad Mata. You talk about the fans being upset with him. He didn't exactly leave the covered bear. He left some good players and a great coach there. Yeah, Dan, but he went to Ohio State. <laughs> I understand that. <laughs> that's the problem. 59-52. An eternity remaining in this game. And I State with some pressure. Musketeers have to continue to make plays. Greg Oden is back in the game, playing with five fouls. Excuse me, four fouls. Goldman down the lane. Oden with the rebound. Boy, what a good play by Oden to pressure that ball without committing that fifth foul. He has 12 rebounds. Lewis kicks it out. Butler from the parking lot. Yeah. And a steal. Connolly. Ohio State with another chance. Under two minutes to play. Lewis. <laughs> he thought about it. His confidence is sky high right now. Lewis doesn't want to give it up. Cook. It's been tough going for the freshman all day. Now Lewis takes a look, down the lane, Lewis up, and one! Ron Lewis refusing to let his team down. What an outstanding play by Lewis, just puts his head down, gets his shoulders around, goes all the way to the goal. The veteran has been making plays all day long, none bigger than the last couple. Free throw is up and in. Ohio State rallying, 59-58, 1.35 to play. The battle for Ohio, 23,000 at Rupp. The winner advancing to the Sweet 16. Who wants the ball now? Gage with 20 points, and he's fouled on the baseline. That was a great move by Cage, but did you see how fast Odin came? So Cage will go to the line, Cook call for the foul, and shoot two. Cook picks up his second. Cole ready to check in. Cage, 20 points, 3 of 4 from the free throw line. Remember what we said earlier in the game, Gus. Xavier does a great job from the free throw line. They don't mind being there with the game on the line. 8 of 11 today. Second free throw, Cage. Senior from that town, 61-58. Here's Conley. Must score situation for Ohio State. Butler inside. Conley for three. Rims off. Lose and a foul. Good call on the baseline. Cole. Clip Greg Oden. Conley is not one of the guys you'd normally want taking that three, but what a great job by Odin working the position inside. Cole grabs onto him now. Odin has to make the free throws. Shooting with his right hand. Missed his last two. 
Xavier, 59.5 seconds away. Ohio State, the number one team in the country, on an 18-game winning streak. Second free throw, good. Full court pressure now. Lavender has been excellent with the basketball. You have time to get a stop without a foul. Burrell, skip pass. Goldman in no man's land and a 20 and a timeout rather called by Xavier. 43.3 remaining. 61-59. Back after this. Welcome back. Welcome back to Bracket in the South. Ohio State Xavier. The winner advancing to the Sweet 16. 61-59 our score. Sean Miller, who was a great player at Pittsburgh. Played with Charles Smith and Jerome Lane. He was a point guard as you take a look at the game reset. Xavier out of timeouts. Interesting thing for Xavier, the worst free throw shooter on the court for Xavier shoots 75%. So if you're Ohio State, you don't want to foul. Lavender, 10 to shoot. Duncan, spinning. Duncan inside, lost it, taken away by O. Chance. 61-59. Lewis shot clock turned up. Lewis drive baseline kicks it out. Butler for the die. No. Loose inside. Lighty. No call. Ten seconds to go to a foul. And Cage will go to the line. Odin picks up his fifth foul. That's a good look, and what a scramble underneath the basket. Lighty, I think, just lost his footing on the inside. Odin had really no choice at that point. Wow. Big free throws here, though. 9.3 to go. Odin fouls out. 14 points, 12 rebounds. Xavier did a really nice job defensively, Gus, preventing the dribble penetration. And they've done a great job defensively the entire game. They held Ohio State to 35% in the first half. The Buckeyes just a little bit better than that in the second half. That is a full timeout. We'll take a timeout. 9.3 to go. 61-59. 61-59. Xavier, 9.3 seconds away from advancing to the Sweet 16, and they send their senior to the line, looking to ice this game. Justin Cage, 5 of 6 from the three-point line this afternoon. He has 22 points. John's wife takes a deep breath. Ohio State still has time. They've got their four best three-point shooters in the game. And he missed it. Got to hurry. Connelly, five to go. Lewis has been awesome. Let's it go. Pinto! He ties it at 62. Two seconds to go. Lavender, three-quarter court. And we're going to overtime in Lexington. <laughs> College basketball, CBS Sports. This is March Madness. They've got their four best three-point shooters in the game. Some screens, Gus, but that is a long, long three-point basket. And Lewis is the guy who has made plays down at the end of the game. He's helped bring them back, and he ties the game. Sean Miller. Wow. 
Ron Lewis refusing to let his team lose. We're heading for an extra one here at Rupp. Ron Lewis, the senior from Columbus, Ohio, hits the biggest shot of his career. And Lewis, this gives, these are points 23, 24, and 25. What an outstanding afternoon he's had. But now Ohio State gets new life, but they'll have to do it without one of their best players. Greg Oden has fouled out of this game. 62 apiece. And they go with the small lineup once again. Now Dolman off the dribble, rolling, and hits. That's a great decision by Dolman. He's a couple of inches taller than anybody out on the court for Ohio State, and he just takes it to the basket. Ivan Harris. Yes, and isn't it interesting how the advantage as to, in terms of perimeter inside-outside has changed with Odin out of the game. Now Xavier's the big team. Conley for three. And he answers. <laughs> Freshman. Sixty-five, sixty-four. We're in overtime. There are 252 three-point baskets out on the court for Ohio State. Xavier coming so close. Burrell. Lost it. Daquan Cook gives it up to Conley. Here come the Buckeyes. They remain cool under pressure. Ron Lewis carried it. Stop and start. Conley tricky. The veteran gets him into overtime, Gus, and then the freshman scores the first five points of the overtime for Ohio State. How does Xavier respond? 67-64. Lewis hitting that jump shot is almost like getting hit right in the stomach and all the air coming out of him. Absolutely. You figure you have the game won, and particularly since you missed a free throw that gave him the opportunity to do it. And now I think you take the advantage, you take advantage of what works for you. Before it was driving the ball against Oden, now it's taking it inside. Xavier needs leadership. Lavender off the dribble. Outlet pass Conley. Duncan with it. Up and in, Mike Conley Jr. 69-64. He has 17. Time out. Xavier. New ball game. Mike Conley Jr. going to work. First he hits a J. Tricks his man to the basket. And then he takes it right at the 6'9 Josh Duncan. Greg Oden is fouled out of this game as you take a look at the game reset. Ohio State with seven unanswered points all coming from freshman Mike Connolly Jr. So Xavier has to figure something out. What Xavier has to do is use their inside advantage. There's still plenty of time left in this game. Now Lavender with Goldman. Goldman trying to post up Lewis. Oh, what, a, what a great play by Lewis. You know, even though you have that inside advantage, if you get good pressure on the ball, it's hard for the guards to find the inside players. Ohio State did a nice job that time. Goldman throws it into the backcourt to Lavender. 69-64. Overtime. Lavender. Guarded by Lewis. Takes it in the corner. Raymond. Short. Weak side rebound goes to Butler. The small lineup is going to present some matchup problems for Xavier, but you've got to get a stop. Daquan Cook answers. Huge basket for the freshman from Dayton. His first basket of the game. 72-64. And a foul. Talked about all the three-point shooting power in the game. Daquan Cook, he struggled down the stretch of the season, but that is a huge basket right there. And this is what Ohio State has done all season long, Gus, and maybe not in as dramatic a fashion as this, but they get themselves in a little bit of a trouble situation, and they hit the gas and go on a spurt. 
So Brown comes in and replaces Raymond. And that, that also foul shot right Raymond there, Raymond Gus Paul. breaks a 10-0 Ohio State run. Just when they need it, they pull out the run. Greg Oden on the bench, fouling out. 14 points, 12 rebounds. Morell. One more free throw. And he missed it. Under two to play. Xavier needs stops. Here's a trap. Connolly in the corner. Cook. Make that Harris. It's going to be hard to trap Connolly. Ball kicked. Shot clock at 19. Now a sub coming in for Xavier. Brandon Cole. Xavier has no choice but to try to exert pressure, but it's going to be tough with Conlon. Winner of this game takes on the winner of Virginia, Tennessee. Conlon. Lost it. Picked up Lavender. Lead pass. Goldman. And he'll lay this one in. Seventy-two, sixty-seven, And a timeout called by Ohio State. Xavier still playing hard. Down 72 to 67. 72-67, Ohio State. And during the timeout, Mike Conley Jr. had to get a new wheel. <laughs> and that's Amy Miller, Sean Miller's wife. Tells it all right there. Sean continuing to encourage his team on the floor. A lot of time left in this game, 72-67. to We saw it with Ohio State. Conley Jr. Now Lewis who hit the big three to send it into overtime. 18 on the shot clock. Conley Jr. to the basket. And a foul. Overtime has belonged to Mike Conley Jr. Absolutely. He hit the first three baskets in the overtime. They were down by two. And he hits that three, and he drives the ball to the basket, then in transition. This is against a 6'9 player. He lays it in. Gets the first free throw. Mike Conley Jr. now with 18 points. He had 10 at halftime. There's his dad. It's simple for Xavier. They have to score and score quickly. Lavender takes a three. Lewis with the rebound. And now you have to think about fouling quickly. Wow. He, he tried to foul him. Knocked away by, by Goldman. No call. And we're in the other way. Butler touched it last. These guys are banging at one another. They just ran into each other. The ball had squirted away already at that point. Here's Duncan. Has his shot blocked. Picked up by Daquan Cook. And Lewis is fouled. What a turn of events. Dustin, did you see who blocked that shot? It was Conley. Mike wow. Conley Jr. Xavier. Seconds away. From heading to the Sweet 16. Somehow. Ohio State managed to dig down deep. And the man at the free throw line right now has been the hero. Ron Lewis with the three-pointer to send it into overtime. Ron Lewis, 26 points with Greg Oden on the bench fouling out. Second one goes. 
29.6 remaining. Lavender. In the corner, Cage. Now Goldman takes a three. Cage with the rebound. 14.6 to go. And a foul. Unbelievable. Wow. As they make the walk to the other end, Thad Mata coaching against his best friend, Shaw Miller. Yesterday he said if they were to lose this game, he'd root for Xavier to go all the way to the Final Four and win the national championship. Ditto for Miller. What a tremendous response by Thad Mata's team, though, Gus. They were down 59 to 50 and looked dead. Lazarus. And his name, his first name is Lewis. That's right. <laughs> As Dolman checks out for the final time. Cage checks out for the final time. What a game. Two great careers for these two seniors. Bad Mata can't even watch. He recruited those two young men. And he told us that he would feel badly if they lost the game. Lavender the other way. Tips it up and in with six seconds to go. Butler in the backcourt. Xavier backs off. One of the great comebacks of this year's NCAA tournament. Ohio State survives and advances as the two best friends embrace at center court. 78-71, the final from Ruff. And the Chevrolet players of the game. Justin Cage, the senior, 25 points, 8 of 8 from the field. Ron Lewis, he was money. 78-71 the final. We go back to the end of regulation. And a missed free throw by Xavier gives Ohio State the opportunity for deadly three-point shooters in the game. Lewis takes the long bomb and ties the game. Little weave out at the top. Everybody trying to get to Lewis. They can't do it. A long, long three-point basket. The Ohio State bench reacting to Ron Lewis's game-tying three. Fireworks at Rupp in the heart of college basketball as Ohio State defeats Xavier. Now let's go to Greg Gumbold. 